Seven women, 15 musical instruments and a performance style they call punk cabaret. The Dach daughters had been stirring up Kyiv's theatre scene for a decade before the invasion of Ukraine prompted them to flee the country. Now their shows have taken on an air of resistance and two of the troupe are here in the studio to tell us more. Ruslana and Gana, hello. Thanks hello. for being here. Hello, bonjour. <laughs> now you're performing Danse Macabre, this show at the Odeon Theatre here in Paris, accompanied by four other members of your troupe. Now, it's billed as a story of pain, of violence, of exile. These are very difficult things to talk about. So I wondered, what were the most important ideas that you had that you needed to express in this show? We uh, start uh, to think, uh, to thinking about this show, uh, something like seven months before the war, and um, we thought uh, that it will be uh, good to make a show about death. Uh, people didn't know how to speak about it. It's a difficult term. Uh, of course, we didn't know that it will be performance about war. <laughs> but Tem was uh, like that, actually. So, Ruslan, it was already something that was on your mind. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, um, e now it is our reflection on what happened in Ukraine. Uh, for us, very important to share uh, reality that we have now there because um, it is more than three months and you know people are already can scroll the news but theater is the place where you come and this is black box uh, close you and you cannot scroll this picture so this is the moment when you can be straight from heart to heart. And this is the moment when people can see real people with whom happened this all, all war. Mm. So um, now we have nice um, um, possibility to share true with people. And uh, this performance about death and also about love, how to be, how to stay human in this huge, horrible situation. Mm, the reality really has come to the stage here. Well, let's get a feel for that show. Here's a clip of Danse Macabre. Now, I read that some parts of the show take inspiration from the Bible, the book of Job specifically, which talks about the presence of evil mm -hmm. in the world. Now, those ideas, good and evil, dark and light, it's a bit like folklore, fairy tales, and in a fairy tale, good normally wins. Mm -hmm. How do you see this story playing out in the real world right now? I think the... Uh, story, some stories of Bible, I don't think that everything, but uh, have such wisdom. And the story of Jacob, it's uh, actually a story like, you know, like Shakespeare. It's <clears throat> something that will be all the time with us. It's, uh, it's a story about your um, belief, how, how you are believe, how can you be, how can you be powerful when you will be without nothing, when um, all that you had in your life are destroyed, who you are as a human being, when you will be without nothing, without nobody, without friends, without family, who you are as you are. And... Um, it's a good question. We, we don't uh, think a lot about it in our normal life, uh, who we are. Because 
we have graphic, uh, we have uh, our job, uh, family, and we have all this world. But when you don't have it anymore, who you are? Mm. They, these are important questions of uh, yeah. faith and identity. And, and I wanted to ask you about coming <clears throat> here to France. I know that you both came here in early March. Uh, other members of your troupe as well fled Ukraine. You've been uh, hosted at artistic residencies in Normandy while your husband's <clears throat> father's brothers <clears throat> stayed yeah. in Ukraine, of course. How has this experience of exile changed the way you think about your country, your identity? You know, it's the point that uh, um, before war we have already all our tour, tour in France. Uh, that's why we understand that somehow we must go, but we understand also that we are citizens of you of country where war started, and we uh, understand that. Uh, Emotionally, we want to stay at home to protect, to help, like a volunteer, like who can do. But uh, in one moment, we understand that our art are very powerful and we can do abroad a lot of uh, good things uh, and we can stay like our soldiers, protect our country inside, we can protect our country outside, to remind people each day what happened now in Ukraine, and not only in Ukraine, because now Ukraine, Ukraine stay for the whole world democracy and freedom, because it is a question of terrorism and democracy world. Uh, now it is a war between good and bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, like a fairy tale, really, because it is a war between past and future, because mental, we are too far from each other. Mm. Now, you speak of activism there, and I noticed that recently you took part in a charity event in Hollywood to raise funds for Ukraine with support from Bill Clinton, John Legend, and actor and director Sean Penn. Now, we've seen artists all around the world pledge their support to Ukrainians since the beginning of the war, and prominent events like the Cannes Film Festival, the Eurovision Song Contest, and the Venice Biennale for Contemporary Art have made their position clear. Let's take a look. Of course we will continue to fight, because we have no other choice than to fight for freedom, and I am convinced that the dictator will lose. Our culture now is under threat too, and has been for a long time. That's why it was important for us to go to Eurovision. It's important to be here, to show Ukrainian culture in all its aspects. We are here representing the country, and our identity and our culture. And what's happening in Ukraine is a war of two cultures. And uh, Ukrainian culture is now being demolished, basically, by Russian missiles, but also by Russian narratives. And we are here in a way to fight those narratives. So we can see that institutional support in the art world there for Ukraine. Do you think it's having a tangible effect? Is it helping? Uh, everything is help Ukraine now. Uh, each. Uh, each point, each style of culture, each culture, each uh, democracy, political, each each way now support and help Ukraine to be not alone in this war because eight years we were alone and it was very, very hard work. Indeed, uh, mentioning the history of that conflict and looking back at your career arc, the Dach Daughters was founded in 2012 within the Dach Theatre in Kiev with the help of director Vlad Troyetsky. The following year, the troupe wrote a song named Donbass, long before the region of southeastern Ukraine became a regular presence in the headlines. Let's take a listen. Now, as we know, the following year, in 2014, Russian troops arrived in Donbass, uh, also in Crimea, sowing the seeds of the war that is raging now. But from a civilian point of view, uh, you were involved in the Maidan grassroots movement, the pro-democracy, pro-European movement. You performed there. Can you tell us a bit about what the mood was? What did Maidan mean for you? It was very important for um, all the citizens of our country. It was uh, important to say to ourselves 
who we are, uh, which nat nationality we are, uh, what we have uh, um, to be honored by, what we have in ourselves, who, who we are. And uh, it, was, um, it was the point when people understood that we are free and we want to be free and we don't want to come back to Soviet Union and uh, we want um, another way uh, of our growing. So, um, it, uh, and it was revolution of dignity. It, it, it was like that. Mm, and that fight continues today with your activity. Ruslana and Gana, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that Danse Macabre will be showing in France, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and then at the Tbilisi International Theatre Festival in Georgia. And the Dach Daughters will be performing at Glastonbury Festival in the UK later this month. We'll leave you with a tip from uh, the Dach Daughters. This is your uh, sister troupe, uh, Dach Abraka, who are also performers with sometimes with you and sometimes mm. elsewhere. We'll leave you with one of their performances. Otherwise, you can get more arts and culture on our website and our social media channels. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. On France 24, watch exclusive interviews with the world's most influential personalities. We need to act together because we're protecting our freedom. Encounters with key political leaders. La quiétude, elle est extrême. Leading figures from the worlds of culture, sport and science. La science, la recherche, la découverte, le progrès, c'est important, c'est pas, pas des mots qui sont vides. Whatever you think is right, you can do. Watch the interview, a meeting of ideas, on France 24 and France24.com. Liberté, égalité, actualité. Versailles, Mont Saint-Michel, the Louvre are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24, discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers, to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.